I'm not sure what we have, what you have here, we have there. So it's just the same, isn't it? So if you go into, if you go, uh, if you Google there, Peter Mar Racing, you can see our course from a drone there. So it's much the same as Punchy Sound, full mile, except for it's over there. So. So we've one farm that's 130 acres, so that's all the young horses. So they all get broken in there, and the stallions there, and mares. And then we've another farm in Mondello, that's 30 acres. And then if one of my best friends is Albert Weld, so we've got a mild grass gallop in that. So we pre-train a lot of train horses for the trainers, so we school everything. And if they're hard to ride, well, they get double schooling. And if they're really hard to ride, they get treble schooling. So that after a while, they're just good without even realising it. And then, uh, we just put aside the ones that are good for the cross country or the ones that aren't and if they don't have it or they don't. So everyone said, oh, you'll school them, you'll get them going, but I think they either have it or they don't. Like, there might be some of them a bit slow going around, but they either like it or they don't. So. Well, I'm a hunting man for starters, so I like to jump in and everything, as most people that know me will tell you that. And I'm getting a bit older. A bit late along the toot now for the gates, but I used to like jumping gates out hunting. And I was down, went down to my grandfather said to me, he, so he was a stud farm, he would be in the 50s and 60s, he would have been the main man for stallions. He brought French stallions across. So it's Escar, the Sire, the Scargo, and the Gold Cup, and the Grand National, Mr. Mulligan. There's a heap of, heap of them anyway. But he said, well, if you want to jump everything so much and send you down to a man there, we'll see how, how, how good you're at spending the season with him anyway. so. He was P.P. Hogan and sure I went down to him and I'm sure I thought it was good but I realised how bad it was and sure but I got to love it across country down there and uh, then just started running a few horses and sure the rest was history wasn't it so. Well it wasn't actually, he didn't really influence a lot. He just kind of knocked the spoiled brightness out of me. Do you know what I mean? He was a hard man. Um, so like I had been to good racing yards. I had been to Willie Burks when I was 12 or 13. So he would have been Paddy Slater's head man. So that would have been Paddy Mullins, uh, Willie Mullins that day. And then as with Francis Flood, so he would have had Dan Carrick Lady, Gold Cup winners. He would have been top of the pops when I was 16. So I had been to some good yards, but I was starting to get a bit wild. So that's why they sent me down to Peepees and Sir Peepees was in the middle of nowhere and basically there was a lot of young horses and he would sell so he would do what the four-year-old point-to-point men are doing now, do you know what I mean? He would get a horse and get some form up in it and sell it to England, Jenny Pittman or the top of the trainers then. But like he was a bit mad, not quite as mad as myself, now. well maybe he was actually. But he, like so he'd have a horse that would be beating the point-to-point, -point. let's say like, yeah I think he had a horse beating the Irish National, he said, well, that's not the end of the world because he'd be all right for the opening bluff next year. Do you know what I mean? That sort of crack. Like, So he was just he was just good at what he did, and that was really it. And, and then I, at the time, I didn't really take anything in. But then, kind of, then a year, as years passed, I went, oh, yeah, now I know what he was doing. Oh, yeah, now it kind of all popped back in. And sure, um, I started running a few horses in the point to point in the cross country, like I said. and. Met Peepee's daughter in Atlaca, I was down for the cross country and she said, Peter, keep running the horses in the cross country there, it's good to have a bit of competition and sure, then I just got, got the bug for it then really. Like I have trained other winners, like bumper winners and hurdle winners and chase winners, but I'm not really that interested in them, I just like the cross country, so. Like, you kind of get lured into false sense security, so Ruby's double, there's kind of a bit too much room on top of it, so you need to be going quick onto that. Uh, otherwise you'd be fumbling away on top and too slow to get off it. So most of the jockeys jump this and uh, they think, oh sure, it's easy. And then they go down to the bottom and there's only two meters or three meters on the top of, uh, of the old double. So then they're flying down to that and then they let them rip at it. Then they jump out the other side and then they get a wolf of fall. So then they go, what the hell with this? I don't like this cross country much. Or how can we change that? And then they get a bit of respect for it then. They go, it's not that easy then. So then you see them and they really start working it and then they jump around and then when they get over this, then it's then the race. So first of all, you need to be a horseman and then when you get to here, then you need to be a jockey. I think, I 
think um, well I'm only the chap anyway in shorts compared to Ender he's been out a lot longer than me but I don't know like I just like the cross country and if Ender was there great and if he wasn't there well that would be a shame do you know what I mean you need the numbers you need to be you need good racing and uh, he'd know what I'd have and he, I'd know what he'd had and that's so that's part of it isn't it you have to have a bit of competition but as in like I'm only trotting along behind in, especially with the horses anyway, and the winners. But sure, who knows, we might catch up a bit.